Hi everyone, I'm Kiwi and you're watching Conversations with Mark Bernard and Jock presented by Comixology Originals, Comixology's exclusive line of creator-owned digital content. If you don't know our guests already, Mark Bernard is a TV and comic book writer and podcaster. He's written for hit TV shows like Carnival Row and Castle Rock and comics for Image, Marvel, and DC. His Comixology Originals graphic novel, Adore It in the Distance, is available to read right now. Jock is an award-winning artist known for his work on The Losers, Batman the Black Mirror, Witches, and the Comixology Originals series, Snow Angels. He's also produced key art and concept designs for films including Dread, The Last Jedi, and Ex Machina. Take it away, guys. Hey, Jock. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Uh, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. Um, I guess we should thank each other for agreeing to sit down and, uh, and, and talk. We do the thing we would do had there been actual conventions, which is find some corner of a bar and catch up for like half an hour after not having seen you for a year. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because of course, this is San Diego Comic Con, isn't it? This is, this, is, this is what this chat is about. This is what it's for. So yeah. Uh, how's your con weekend been? Good, Mark? It's uh, been exceptionally good. It's been good. It's been really busy. It's been, I've been shuffling back and forth from Zoom room to Zoom room. It's been bonkers. Um, <laughs> the, the pedestrian traffic isn't as bad as it usually is, um, but it's the uh, it's still been you know it, it's 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 nostalgic for me this uh, this kind of con experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And where are you based? Are, are you in LA? I am in LA. I'm right now in my Fortress of Solitude, um, which that. is a little kind of office nook slash high tech prison cell. That I've uh, that I found myself in to just be able to get work done during the day because I got kids at home and uh, yeah, they can get voluminous. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like the first time I met you was at a con. I feel like it was probably either New York or San Diego. I think the Losers had just come out. Um, and, yeah, uh, that's we're now showing our age, Mark. That was, that was yeah. a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was like three careers ago for me as yeah. well, but um, but yeah, because I remember reviewing the losers for Entertainment Weekly. That's and, right, uh, and uh, and like DC, what they used to do, I don't know if they still do. They used to hold these dinners for uh, for like the press and then for the talent, and they would all kind of get together and mingle or whatever. And then Andy Andy Diggle found me in this thing and was like, "Dude, thank you so much for that review. That was great." And he's like, "You should meet Jock." And Jock was like, "Hey, there's a beer in the corner and raise it. Cheers." Um, yeah, that's right. I, I can remember actually that was in the, I think it was 03 or 04 and that was in, in the back of the Hyatt when, um, you know, do you remember when they were like redoing the bar and everyone, every, they made, they did like a pop-up bar before pop-ups became a thing, like outside in the garden and then, mm-hmm. and, and that was my first year there and I, it was, it was, uh, it was an amazing thing. Yeah, and I remember because uh, that's right, you were with uh, NCA Weekly and, um, uh, it being our first American work and everything, that was a pretty pretty big deal for us you know, to be in there. So thanks for for taking the time to review it. You know, it was it was uh, it was very nice. You no, know, it was uh, it's a long game because ultimately what I wanted was a one on one Zoom with Josh um, <laughs> in twenty twenty one. In twenty twenty one. So you got to plant the seeds. They won't see you coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you you've, you've been doing all sorts since then, right? I mean. Um, yeah, man, it's it's been a it's been a bit of a, a roller coaster in the slowest possible way, sure. which is I always wanted to to be able to make things on screens. Like I always wanted to be a screenwriter. Um, yeah. And then I ended up I fell into entertainment journalism. I was there for almost twenty years, kind of yeah. bouncing back and forth from publication to websites to newspapers, um, before I finally got to sort of crack my way into it. But it, it, there's some part of me that always kind of comes back to comics, you know, like it's it's the mother's milk for me in any way like that. It was it was Star Wars and like Conan the Barbarian, which were the things that that kind of turned me into or at least unlocked the geek gene that had been lying dormant in my DNA. Sure. For so long. Um, what what is it about comics for you? I mean, because it's. And I don't know because I'm not an artist and, and, and I've never like the, the, the visual media, the being able to make it is not a thing that I can do. I wish I could, but I can't. But I have to imagine that there are lots of things that a talented person like you could do and are doing or whatever, but what keeps bringing you back 
the comics. Yeah, co- the comics are a funny one, aren't they? Because uh, I, th- I think when I started out, I, I just wanted to draw comics. But the truth is, I, I love movies just as much. I love posters. I love, you know, many different types of visual media that there are. You know, they're all they're all uh, they're all in there. Um, but comics was sort of my, my first love, really, and, and and that was the thing that made me want to draw for a living. I, I think specifically, you know, that that was the thing that made me think, okay, maybe maybe I can do this, and maybe you know, I can somehow scrape together enough money to kind of get by in life, you know, while still drawing. That like comics was 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 that thing, you know. Um, and um, you know, I've been very lucky since that. Yeah, you know, I've I've got to work on movies and and done other stuff, but I do always come come back to comics because there's something. Um, you know, with the, with the other mediums, you're always you're always to a to a degree like a like a, a cog in the machine. I think you know, and with comics, you're always front and center, and there's something really satisfying about. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's the same as as a writer, but there's something just really satisfying about how it's, it's your words or, or, or your drawings that are literally people are seeing, and, and that's that's what's being put out there. You know, it's it's um it's uh you know it, some of the most rewarding stuff I've done has, has been for films, you know, for sure. It's it's exciting to get to work on 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 the uh, on movies, but um, but nothing still quite matches uh, drawing a comic book and, and seeing it on the stands or or, or on on my iPad now. You know, um, uh, it's uh, it's a really special thing, I think, and it's such a small team that that, that that make comics. You know, they're very pure and they allow for really you know great stories, which which is what we all love, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I mean, I think it's. To your point, I mean, that's the filter, right? Like how many people between you and the reader are there? You know, and then yeah. I have to imagine it's a bit like, you know, you can either be um, the Rolling Stones or you can be a garage band. And the Rolling Stones, like, yeah, sure, I guess whatever record they want to make, but there's marketing divisions and there's A&R guys and there's an entire label machinery and there's, you know, market testing of like, hey, how do we do this? Whereas sure. if it's four people in a garage, then you make the music you want to make and you cut the tape, yeah. you tape and you sell it out of your trunk. You know, in comics, the thing that's amazing is that there are like two or three people between the story and the audience. Yeah. There's, there's an editor and there's a letterer and a colorist. Maybe there's a publisher if he or she gives shit about reading um, the books. But then it goes to the, to the audience and it goes to the fans. And it's, yeah. it's the most uncut version of this thing. Um, yeah, definitely. It exists. And, and in fact, if you know, if 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 you do, if you do sort of, you know, uh, you know, even when you do the more mainstream work, I feel like it's still us in a garage making the kind of music that we want to make. But then you have the benefit of like, you know, the DC publicity department, <laughs> which, is, which is great. You know, uh, you know. Um, so to me, that that you know, to use the music sort of analogy, that 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 to me is 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 the beauty of it. You know, when you're able to comics, sort of, I think allow you to sort of you know, to, you know follow your own thing and 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 do do the stuff that you really enjoy doing and the stuff that you really want to see. And that's uh, like you say, it's a really kind of kind of um, pure connection. You know, so yeah, it's, it's terrific. Yeah, I mean, I have to think the only thing that's better, or at least pure, would be like a novelist. Like if you're Stephen sure. King then like it's just me and these words and nobody's going to tell me what I can write and what I can't write so here you go world you know go off and, and take it like it if you do like it if you don't I don't care I'm Stephen friggin king um, yeah but beyond that for mere mortals like us it feels like yeah I'm you're Mark crazy. friggin Bernardin come on what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> I say that every time I go into a meeting and yet they still tell me no <laughs> Don't you know who I am? I'm sorry, who are you? Yeah, we validate your parking. <laughs> so so comics wise, Mark, then what have you been working on? Because we, we both have stuff out through uh, Comicsology, right? It is, and yeah. uh, Andorra, is that right? With Ariella? Yeah, that Andorra writing? in the distance. And the distance, um, yeah. When is yeah. that, um, is that out already or is that- It is of, not uh, out yet. They, they've yet to, well, well, then again, I'm not sure when this is, if this is going during Comic-Con, then, then the book will be out. So yeah, oh, cool. it's out already. Um, you know, pardon us, audience, for figuring out how time and space works on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do we reveal now that actually we're, we're recording this in May, and then even though it's a nice idea to think that we're in San Diego, right? Uh, sorry, guys, we're not. It would be amazing <laughs> if we were just in adjoining hotel suites, like yeah, not yeah. in the same place, <laughs> but like we're in the same place. We're, we're we got. Yeah, let me just. Can you hear this? Did, did, I, did I sell it right? Did I go the right direction? 
Um, yeah, no, I, I have this book, Adora in the Distance, which is a long time coming. Like yeah. I've been working on this for what feels like about 15, 16 years. Wow. Um, yeah, like it, and, and by working, I mean, the idea hit me about 15 years sure. ago. And then just does that thing where it marinates for a while. Where like, yeah, yeah. you don't know what it is. You're not sure what shape it is, what form it is, but you know, there's a kind of a story you want to tell, you know, and it, and it started, it, it came from when, um, when my daughter was diagnosed with autism at like two and a half, three years old. And, and I, as a writer, you know, there's always like, a, you know, telling, talking to people about that. They will say, well, you should write about that. Like that feels like it's a really personal thing. And and this was especially at the time when there was lots of kind of confessional memoirs and like, here's my journey. And I was like, I don't want to write about me. Like that's garbage. Like I'm not, I'm not the most interesting person here. Like of this story, I'm not the one who's going through very much. Um, and so I, I didn't know how to do it or how to process it. Um, and then it, it sort of clicked that the way to do it was to imagine the story from within that kid's head. Um, and then, and, you know, that kid for whom, as very much for me, um, story is a quest. Like, it's about fantasy. It, you know, if I'm going to write about this, I'm going to write a high fantasy sort of like writer setting out into the unknown, um, you know, pirates and dragons and ogres and like, all, like I make it make it Lord of the Rings, ultimately. Like, can, can you make this Lord of the Rings? Yes, I can. What's the big bad at the end of it? Well, that's the thing. You know, it, it's, it's ultimately a story about somebody returning to the world they'd left behind. And, and that world has been, in the time you were stuck in it, built as the monster, as the unknown, as the thing that's the furthest away. Um, and it, there, there were three or four starts and stops. Like I, I pitched it to publishers um, and editors and, you know, some of them responded very well to it, but ultimately decided that they, they couldn't make it go. Some of them wanted to change it in ways that that I didn't ultimately feel that comfortable with. So it just kept sure. on getting closer and then put back in the box. It was like, if I'm gonna do this, if this is gonna be the one, then I kind of feel like I wanna do it the way that feels the most right to me. Um, yeah. And uh, and like I even thought about kickstarting it once or twice, but then just things kept on, the, the ground kept on falling out from underneath me. Um, and then I met, uh, and by me, Chip, I mean, I. Uh, Chip Mosher, who I'd known back when he was at Boom as a, as a PR sure. guy, as, as comics is the smallest community in the world, everybody just, nobody ever leaves, everybody just moves. It's musical chairs at some point. <laughs> like every 18 months, the, the music comes up and everybody shifts and goes to a different, job, a different job at a different place. And Chip just went over to Comicsology and was like, hey man, uh, we're doing these originals lines, like we're, we're paying real advances, we're, it's creator owned for real. And, uh, and you can do whatever you want. Do you have the thing that you've always wanted to do? Um, yeah. And could it be, could this be the place to do it? And I said, well, yeah, like actually I have this thing. And I pitched it to him very quickly, you know, much like the pitch I just gave you. And he's like, all right, we're gonna do that. I'm like, so do we need to get anybody's approval? He's like, no, we're just gonna do that. Um, and then, then I remember like starting to go down the list of who I thought would be a, a good artist for this. And, uh, and I wanted to work with Ariella for years. Like I wanted to work with her on Genius over at, uh, at Image. I wanted to work with her, like just, can we make something together? Can we build something yeah. together? And she was busy as heck because she's phenomenal. And she's fantastic, wonderful. yeah, really fantastic. She's, she's ridiculous. And, uh, and then this just happened to be the one that clicked. And I, I can't tell you how important it was to have her on this book because there's parts of it that she unlocked that I didn't even think of. You know, there's stuff that she came to and said, well, what if it's this? And then I said, well, then it always, it always has been that. I just didn't know it yet. I just couldn't see it yet. And, um, and she elevated it in ways that, that I can never actually articulate my gratitude for. Well, um, you know, and, and, and so- Which is comics. It's, it's comics. Which is comics, like, that's right? the that's... joy of comics. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's, you know, and, and I've, I've never had the experience that I, I still desperately want to have it of um, writing who the artist I know is going to be doing it. Uh -huh. You know, like it's always been, the thing has been written and we found an artist to come aboard. Um, sure. So I'm, I'm still hoping to get that sort of the magic synthesis of guys in a garage and like you play the bass and I'll play the drums and then the song will just emerge. I've never yeah, had yeah. that. But, but the second look from somebody coming into it a little cold and then seeing things in it that I didn't know were there is a thing that only comics can do. 
Um, yeah, that's that's the magic. That's great. So, so um, does uh, does the distance refer to the journey or 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 something else as well? Um, it's it's a little bit of both. You know, it's a little bit of of how far do you have to go to get the thing you want, and then how far away from you is the thing you want. You know, and did you even know you wanted it? Um, you know, and sure. I think there's there's that um, there's that quote, and I cannot remember the life of me who said it, but it was some. I think it was like Blake, but it's like a man's reach should exceed his grasp or what to heaven for. You know, like the distance is what makes it worthwhile. That the gulf between having and wanting is where the energy of life comes from. And so sure. that feeling of, you know, like if I, if I could get there, I'd have what I wanted, but the getting there is what makes it important. Um, I think, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, well it's, said. It's early here in Los Angeles, <laughs> last <laughs> San Diego. <laughs> Um, and so tell me about Snow Angels. Like, how did, uh, how did, um, how did you get to be able, were you in like, did you have the garage band experience? Was it like, hey, Jeff Lemire calls you up and says, I got this thing I want to do. And then you're like, stop. And then <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> how we make um, comics, guys. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny, because I, I looked shocked there when you said that you've been thinking, you know, gestating on it for 15 years, but actually, Jeff told me that he had the idea for Snow Angels in like uh, so 2007, something like that, 2006, 2007, which is actually, here we are, it's like, yeah, that's like 14 years ago now. Yeah. Um, I was originally, I've, I've you know, met, met Jeff uh, around that time, I'd say. Um, you know, we were friendly and obviously admired each other's work. You know, he's a brilliant writer and we've always talked about doing something together. And um, I can't remember what project I, I was coming off of, but he floated the idea of Snow Angels and I, I enthusiastically agreed. I, I love the idea of, um, you know, it takes place on an ice planet, which um, mm. uh, I, 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 I love the idea of, of world building and particularly world building where there aren't that many backgrounds, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I, uh, and, uh, I, know, I, I, I kid because, of course, actually, really, you just have to show the right stuff in a very good, in a very strong way to make it feel like it's a, like it's a, you know, a, a desolate, icy place. But um, anyway, I, I digress. Um, yeah, you know, so we chatted about doing something. These suggested snow angels, and then it's we, we flip flopped quite a lot actually because um, for a little while uh, he wanted to draw it himself because he's a he he's, he's, makes terrific stories, writes and draws them himself. Um, and in fact, we were doing it and he emailed me, I think this was like 2014. And he said, you know what, I, I, I want to draw it. And I said, Jeff, of course, like, if you feel you want to draw this thing, it's your story, like draw it, you know, for hundred percent. You know, that I was disappointed not, not to not to do it with him, but um, I knew that, you know, something else would, would, would come up down the line. And, um, and on that day, Scott, uh, Scott Snyder uh, phoned me and asked if I had time to do witches. So there was a little bit of serendipity. I'm still convinced they probably spoke to each other, but that's 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 another story. <laughs> yeah. so Scott, set up at the dance. Like, hey, yeah, right, if I yeah. go out with him now, you go out with him later. Right. So, but anyway, Scott called and told me about witches, and I was just like, "Well, that sounds terrific." So, so, so we did that, and um, but then, yeah, to cut a long story short, um, yeah, you know, we we decided that we would still do it together, and then just it was just a case of kind of schedules lining up and uh. You know, funnily enough, with with Snow Angels, so it's a story of, of a family, basically two sisters on 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 an ice planet, and they live in a trench, which is uh, um, apparently uh, ongoing forever. You know, the, the whole the whole di distance of the the perimeter of, of the whole planet is apparently this trench, and the community that lives in the trench have built up these sort of uh, religious beliefs and lots of uh, you know. Um, uh backstories and mythology that they tell the children about, about what it's like living in the trench and what they must must mustn't do within the trench um and uh uh yes yeah, so hang on what happened i've lost my thread I, I started thinking about the mythology of the trench oh I, yeah i know so 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 it it, it it worked out that um i basically started working on it right when lockdown hit you know like march you know mm. it was maybe a little bit before that but i started drawing pages that are like a, a, a at a, at a pace round about February, March last year. Um, and I pretty much drew the whole thing. I finished drawing it a couple of months ago, maybe, um, during lockdown. And suddenly lockdown had, had this strange kind of, there was a strange metaphor with the story that occurs. Um, 
with with the it just kind of I don't know it took on it, it, it's the perfect time but it, 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 it felt like really good timing that that, that 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 we did it during this weird year that that, that we've all experienced um because it's 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 about the girls you know breaking out of of uh rules and and established kind of uh you know kind of ideas that, and and, and le learning their own way and trusting in one another and using the strength of one another to to, to get through something and you know, hopefully triumph at, at the end. And, and and the metaphors were just like thick and fast for kind of lockdown <laughs> and society and what we all have missed and what we're all hoping for when we all get together again. So it was it was a it, you know it, it it was a really kind of it felt quite special really to 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 draw it to be honest. Um, and yeah, and this has never happened before. It's a ten issue series, and I mm -hmm. drew the very last page on the day that issue one came out. So the whole thing is drawn and, and uh, wow. so we're, we're not going to be there any, there's not going to be any delays. It's coming out monthly. Um, I think <laughs> as we're talking now, issue four is out today, but I think by July it'll be on about issue six. So um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and similarly, you know, Friendly with Chip and, and Comixology have just been amazing at just letting us, supporting us and letting us do our thing, which I think there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a the great thing in, in comics like you're talking about how there's a there's a trust between us I think you know and, and we all know that we're gonna at least try our best to bring our best game to the table and 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 uh, thank goodness we have you know people that let us do it. Um, it, it I've I've had these conversations with um with a lot of creative people over the last year you know 14, 15 months or so about um, imposter syndrome. You know, and I and I feel like, to, to a certain degree, um, it had been exacerbated by the fact that we weren't seeing anybody else. So the 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 lockdown, the quarantines, the staying at home, turned a lot of yeah. us inwards in ways that we might not yeah. have ordinarily been. Um, 100%, yeah, yeah. Is that a thing that uh, that you suffer from? Like, uh, yeah, sure, day? every day. <laughs> <laughs> every, every day, I sort of feel. I feel you know, if someone. You know, I've been very lucky, Mark. You know, I've worked on stuff like, but like I say, when I was starting out, I was just looking at a way that I could somehow draw every day. And, you know, um, we talked about the losers. You know, there's a movie made of the losers. I've done a bunch of concept work. So I work for, you know, films like Star Wars, um, you know, smaller, but stuff that I'm maybe the most proud of. I work with Alex Garland on like Ex Machina and Dread and Annihilation and, you know, I've I've done stuff that that arguably on the CV is is pretty is pretty good, right? You know, it's, I've, I've, I've um, uh, but still, you know, um, I I think if 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 you if you come into work and, and you sort of think, hey, I've done all these things, you know, look, look what I can do now, and, and you, you know, your heart won't be in it in the same way. You know, the the, the striving is missing, I think. Mm -hmm. So even though imposter syndrome, like I I, I, I do. I get it a lot, you know, it, but um, I'm, I've, I've been sort of wondering about kind of whether to sort of call it something else really, because I, cause I, I sort of wonder whether really it's because probably for, for me, I'm sort of not, all, you know, I'm sure you're the same, you know, I'm not always satisfied with, with what I've drawn. I, I think, okay, I could have done this better. This isn't quite what I had in my in my mind, but that that's just, that's, that's the process, right? I mean, that's actually how, how this stuff goes down. Um, and, it, and it's easy, I sort of find that is I can kind of focus on on it not being what I want it to be, or I can let it be and, and, and let it be what it is. And I think comics as well are really good for that because they force you to 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 to, to churn out work. They, there's always another page. There's always another panel. There's always another thing that you have to draw. And um, so a sort of, there's a sort of rhythm and a kind of energy that happens when, when you're on when you're on a constant book that, that, that I've, I haven't experienced with any other work. You know, the movie work is much more considered and slower. You have more time. The pressure isn't quite the same. Well, there is pressure, but it's in, in a different way. Um, in comics, there's a, you know, my, my, I sort of find that my best work is when I'm just kind of like just going, you know, just just page after page. I'm in a, up, up against the deadline, and I've just got to do it. So, um, in those moments, the, then then my drawing surprised me, and I can do stuff that I knew that I would never be able to do if I thought about it too much. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the imposter syndrome thing is thinking about it too much. You know, I, you know, I. I I, I, I sort of I, I do feel like that I sort of think when are they going to find out you know and then and then, and then, and then, and then when I do a bad drawing I think well that's it I'm done you know it, it's it's been a good run 
But I don't know whether you can swear on this. I'll swear on this, but like it's been a good run, but I'm fucked. That's it. They've all they've all found out. I mm-hmm. can't draw really. This is all pretend. You know, thank you, good night, sort of thing. And of course, yeah, I, I feel that all all the time. And I think um, you're right. Lockdown has kind of you know has kind of made that worse in a way because even though with conventions, you know, I, I, I kind of had a love hate relationship with some conventions because. They're a brilliant thing to be able to get out and meet your friends and talk with other people that, that, that do what you do. But then, excuse me, but then if you're up against deadline, you know, mm-hmm. it sounds like an awful first world problem, but if when you're up against deadline, like, you know, getting on a flight to America, is sometimes it's, it's, uh, it, it, it can interfere with, 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 your, with your work or, or your, what your schedule or whatever. Um, but actually during lockdown, I've realised just how much I've missed it and how much I, I, I uh, get from seeing my friends and being in a bar and having a drink and chatting through all this stuff because because it is such a solitary thing that we do and mm-hmm. actually and i think that's that's I, I, I enjoy that about it but actually i've really missed just seeing other people and 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 you know particularly other people that, that do this thing that we do you know uh, so um yeah lockdowns has has uh amplified all that i think mm-hmm. that was a very long-winded answer to, to my, but but um i but agree it was great so I agree yeah. as well. I mean, I think that that you know, a thing that you said, like once once you're in the middle of it, it's like once you're in the flow state, you know, or or like the downhill of doing work, where it's coming at you fast, you're feeling it, you know, you if you don't know what you're doing, you trust that you're going to be able to do it, right? For, yeah. For me, when yeah. I'm writing, it's like the last twenty pages of a script where it's like, I don't know, I figure all the problems out, like I know all the stuff, and even if I don't know it yet, I. I, it's like Tarzan. Like I know I'm going to reach for the right vine, and it'll be there for me when I need it. And then we'll just yeah. keep on moving. Yeah. And when you're in that, you don't have the time really, or the bandwidth to second guess yourself. But yeah, it's that, that's it's right. The yeah. Stops of it that make yeah. it so easy for you. Like, are they going to discover that this is the time that I can't write? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 hundred percent. That's a really good way of, of putting it. I think you know that's what I was trying to touch on when I said I kind of, um, yeah. If, if you've got the time to think about it, of course you're going to naturally feel a bit insecure. You're going to, you're, you're going to, you know. I mean, th- but the insecurity comes with also excitement and the energy of doing this job and how lucky we are to get to do this. You know, it, it's all a very weird kind of mix of, of stuff. You know, but um, yeah, yeah. You know, lockdown is kind of has kind of uh, exacerbated so you know probably the negative aspects i think and, and for, for creators i think you know certainly mm-hmm. friends right as an artist that i've spoken to are all kind of feeling the same way because it is very very solitary in, in lots of ways but um you know the, in the uk we're hopefully uh, that it's, it's a sensible thing to do but things are easing up you know where mm-hmm. there's, there's a certain amount of normality coming back and, and and it'll be interesting to see how that kind of uh in, impacts things you know um but yeah, I, 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 I'm looking forward to being in a bar with you, Mark, and just having a pint rather than doing it, you know, over this camera, <laughs> even though this is very nice too. It is, because it's so hard to buy you a pint this way. Like, it's, I'm sure it's possible. Like, I'm sure I could find the app that would send you a beer sure. to your house. Yeah. But it's a, it's, it's, it feels like it's a, it's a harder process than it ought to be. But you are going to do that as well, though, right? When we hang up, you're going to send me... <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, I'll... <laughs> I'll send it Amazon next day and you'll get it. Just a wet, a wet box with a glass yeah. rattling around. Yeah. 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 It used to be a beer. Um, so what's uh, what's next for you comics-wise? What what comes after Snow Angels? So, yeah, so I've, I've, I'm still coloring Snow Angels. I've, I've, I've finished drawing it. Um, and right now I'm um, writing and drawing a, my own project, which is really mm. exciting. Daunting, but you talk about imposter syndrome. You know, uh, um, I haven't written a ton of stuff, but... Um, I'm, I'm really excited about this. It's really hard to say whether in July it, 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 it would have been announced or not, you know? <laughs> um, but... Um, I wonder what. We'll see, right? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... So, so, no play. So, so, so that's... Uh, that's, that's I mean, yeah, I'm really excited about it, you know? Um, uh, I've written a few things, um, but um, this is definitely really in comics. This this is definitely the, the biggest thing I've done. But I've I've got my friends around me, and the good friend Lee Garbit that I know you know very well is, yes. is, is helping me. Um, and I've got you know somehow a ton of amazing writers that I've worked with that I can call and 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 you know you know um, pitch ideas to you know you know 
you know talk things through so i'm really super excited i, I, I feel like the core idea is, is really good and mm -hmm. and um and that's that's what i'm excited about it's, it's uh, uh so i'm spending all year i think the first issue comes out in december so um yeah this year is, is going to be a busy year for me but uh, an exciting one that's awesome. yeah like it's, it's um i mean it is so important to be able to move out of our comfort zones you know like finding new New ways to challenge yourself, you know, either in the in the business that you do, in the in the medium that you work, in other stuff, you know, like comics. For me, I, I, I have a love hate relationship to them in that, like, I still love them. I love them to death, despite the fact that they've beaten me up more than once in the past. Jack Kirby, yeah. comics will break your heart. It'll break your heart. The only reason you do it is because you love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, so yeah, like I'm working on another thing for Comixology, which hasn't been announced yet, but the, the process was so smooth and, uh, and, and nurturing doing Adora. There's like, yeah, let's, let's do more. Why would we not do more? Um, so that's in process. Um, I just had a Spider-Man book come out, Peter Parker, The Amazing Shutterbug. No way. Um, yeah, yeah. How who's who's publishing it? that? Um, <laughs> tiny, tiny publisher, um, used to be in New York. I think they've since moved. Um, but yeah, like, and it's, it's tied into Jason Aaron's big Heroes Unborn event. So it's kind of a what if, like, what if Peter Parker right. had never been bitten by a spider? Uh -huh. um, like, what, what does that guy's life look like? Is he, is he, was he always going to be a hero or was that, was that the juice that, uh, that gets pumped into his veins? So it's kind of fun to just like, what if are my favorite kinds of stories? So to get to do yeah. what if Peter Parker never got bit was kind of cool. So, so is it a spoiler if I asked like, was it the spider or was it him all along? Um... <laughs> it was not the spider. Um, right on. Of course it was. Of course it was. Of course it was. Yes, we 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 are the heroes we want to be. Um, so there's that, and then I'm I'm hopefully you know by the time this comes out, the Kickstarter campaign will be over, um, I think. But I'm I'm hopefully it was successful. Let's pretend it was successful, and I'm directing a, a short film, my very first. I Sure. I, I actually uh, I knew about this and, and I actually wanted to ask you about that because uh, I know that we both share, you know, working in different mediums, which we're very lucky to do. And I know that uh, was one of your goals to direct a movie, yes. right? Be before uh, I turn 50. Before you turn 50, right, right. And that's November. You getting I, will, I will turn 50 in November. Um, we are going to live in, in, the, in the alternate reality and hopefully it's the reality reality that the Kickstarter was successful. And that we are right now deep into pre-production on this thing. Uh, it's a short, so it's not like I'm not making a feature. That was the first goal was I want to make a movie movie. And sure. then the closer I got to 50, the more I realized that like, come on, dude, like that's not really, it's not in the cards. But a short might be. Um, and I think much like you, um, knowing that it's, it's out of my comfort zone, I've never done it before. I've always wanted to do it. Um, I did it in college. Like, you know, I made a couple of short sure. shows, you know, a, 18 year old schmuck. Um, but now it's, I have people that I can call for advice. I have, you know, friends and colleagues and coworkers and associates who have generously opened themselves up to say, hey man, if there's anything that you want to know, like I've made a dozen movies, you know, I've done this 50 times. Like I've directed a hundred episodes of television. Like I've, yeah. all of these things, like this, this, this amazing sort of network of knowledge that that has presented itself to me is is both daunting and inspiring of the you know it's it's not impossible but it's no. very much a leap of faith you know be like i've never done this before but i have to feel as if if i walk off this cliff i'm going to land on something solid otherwise of course, yeah. you know I, I i gotta reach for the next vine <laughs> yeah and it'll be there for me um but yeah i'm i'm super super excited because you know what why not you know like why not yeah. reach for the thing why not try for the thing like the worst that could happen is i could fail um and then i could have wasted all these people's money but that is still not the worst thing in the world <laughs> it's fine it's fine <laughs> it's okay sorry guys I mean, <laughs> here's your link <laughs> oh no that's great man so um so is there a kickstarter running now is that what's what's or is it is it is there going to be or what where, where's it at um well given the weird temporal nature of our conversation um right now in may the kickstarter starts tomorrow 
when you are oh, watching this okay. in July, the Kickstarter will have been over. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know. How time travel stories are always a problem. Let's just let's just they, assume, let's... they really are. <laughs> I've, I've, I've gotten oh, to work on a couple of them in the past, and time travel is always a pain in the ass. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Though. I look forward to, to to backing it. That's that's uh, that's incredible news that you've got it up and running. Yeah, man. You know, because time time waits for nobody, and uh, and if there's a dream that you have, if there's a thing you've always wanted to do, and and you seem to have it within your grasp to get it done then you almost owe it to yourself to try. Um, exactly. You know, is, that so, a good, is that a good point to end on? That, is, that was beautiful. I, I, feel, I feel like we can, or we can just ask each other questions like, hey, are you wearing pants? <laughs> <laughs> Do you work with pants on? Yes. Oh, look at you. Nice try, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it feels, like, it feels like that was a good place to stop. Um, so yes, thank you to the good folks at Comixology for inviting us to catch up with each other, you know, to do yeah. a thing that we haven't gotten to do in a while. Um, you know, congrats on Snow Angels. It's, it's fantastic and lovely. Is there, is there a chance for more of it past those first 10? We've, uh, we've talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about it. There's, um, so I'm not going to tell you how it ends because mm -hmm. the, it ended yet in, in, uh, even in July it wouldn't have ended, but, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's possibilities, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, similarly, yeah, um, uh, it's it's great to 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 have that opportunity. If 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 we if Jeff says, do you know what? We want to do this with the girls now, and then we can go and do it. <laughs> That's, we're very lucky. Yeah, That's awesome. Congrats, man. Um, and to you, yeah. So uh, Andrew is going to be out. It, it'll be out by the time people have seen this, right? So yeah. go from Comicsology and. Yeah, and eventually Dark Horse. I think Dark Horse makes all the things in print now for Comixology. And so the book came out Father's Day, um, Father's Day week. Oh, which felt like, you know, the perfect time to drop a book about a dad and his kid. Um, so, so yeah. So that's go lovely. buy our stuff. Go buy our stuff. <laughs> that's, that's, you, you sat here for 45 minutes watching us to eventually get to the part where we tell you to go buy our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Jack, good to see you. Yeah, you too, Mark. Take good care, and I hope to see you in person before too long. Same here. All right, man. Cheers. Cheers.